my first command. Thou shall have no other gods but me. Whoa, no, no. People should have as many gods as they feel comfortable with. <laughs> nope, there's one. That's right, God of the Jew. You sure it's not God of the white people? Jesus is white. Second commandment. Thou shalt have the right to bear arms. <laughs> yep, God-given right, second one. No, these are the God-given thing. That's the U.S. Constitution. I honestly don't see the difference. And now I am triggered. Thou shalt not make idols from any country. Watching you, Simon Cowell. Uh, don't use God's name in vain. Respect the Sabbath. And, oh, respect your father and mother. I think we can agree. No, there's father and father. There's mother and mother. Furry and... Liberal. Uh, birthing person. On to the next one. Thou shalt not steal. Oh, my abyss. Moses, I hate to bring it to you, but the ground you're standing on, stolen. Those are different times. Those are, besides, we killed them first. Next one, thou shalt not kill. Grandma Zokra, dead gummit. Next, no adultery. Cool. I don't personally do it, but for some couples, that works for them. Well, I'm against it, but I've done it. Next commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I don't talk to my neighbors. Final commandment. Do not envy. I ain't green with envy over anything y'all have. Oh, we know you're not green. Thanks for the climate change problem, pal. Y'all are more difficult than parting the Red Sea. Merry Christmas from Correct Opinions. Me, Jake, Katie, Grimace, and Freeman <laughs> Derek back in the States. We're still abroad. Australia's been amazing. Um, you're you're gonna go home for Christmas. We're staying. At, we're doing Australian Christmas. We are. It's been amazing to be nice and warm here, but the, it it just. Christmas to me is so cold weather, snowy, that I just haven't felt the Christmas spirit. It does feel different. You're in a store and there's garland everywhere, but you're in shorts and you hear Christmas music. It, it confuses yeah. the brain. It That's does. the worst jet lag, is feeling like it's Christmas, but it's not. That is. We That's need to be like pumping the Christmas music in here. <laughs> it's time to fire it up. Because I really don't feel like it's Christmas at all, honestly. Okay. Well, we we'll start wearing more layers, so at least we could trick ourselves mm -hmm. into thinking. I like, did put Thomas in like a Christmas tree little outfit today, so maybe that will help. That's good. Yeah, that'll help. Uh -huh. That's smart. Um, Merry Christmas to all y'all, uh, wherever you're listening. All we want for Christmas, five-star review. That's all we want. That's it, guys. That's all I want. That's when it. My mom, my mom has me in our gift to change. I go, mom, just five <laughs> stars. Uh, so thank y'all. Much love. Enjoy this episode. Uh, let's roll music. Correct opinion. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Uh, this end of the year season, Christmas, we love it, we love it. Mm, or do you? It can be stressful. It can be really a lot for some people, unfortunately. Maybe your family does the, too much, does too little. Maybe they, I don't they're the family who puts the pickle in the Christmas tree. Yeah, like, ugh, that would ugh, depress me. That's weird, and I don't want to touch a raw pickle this <laughs> early in the morning. Um, so maybe therapy can be that positive thing during your holiday season that can counteract those negative things. I love therapy. I've done it. If you're thinking about giving it a try, Try BetterHelp. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash correct today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash correct. You know, I've heard a lot of men have to shave. Now, this isn't something that I necessarily have to deal with because of the testosterone I lack, but I see oh. other people, I see you, and I, I think, do. I bet he uses a razor. I shave a neared, and I use Harry's. Do dude. you? There's huh. a description for everything these days, right? Oh, well, oh, you get beef jerky delivered, dude, whatever. But they've lost their value. Mm -hmm. Harry's, mm -hmm. they figured out how to not do that. Yeah, um, but it costs a fortune. You get them as low as $2 per blade at harrys.com slash tray. Never wow. mind. I don't know what I was thinking. The trial set is a $13 value for just $3 at harrys.com slash tray. I love their razors. I use their styling paste. They have, uh, you know, also the the shaving cream, I feel like, makes a difference. It's really oh, nice. And yeah. so what a great gift this holiday season. It's practical. It's quality. It's affordable. Katie, tell them how to get Chash in on this deal. So, they're so not hairy. You, you need to get a subscription that saves you time and money with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash tray. That's harrys.com slash tray for a $3 oh. trial set. Got it. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm doing Christmas in Australia. I don't, I don't know. Travel guy. Ugh. But I, I love eating out when I'm traveling, but I do, sometimes you just wanna have a nice meal at home. And it's like you have these weird deliveries, blah, 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 but Cook Unity changed everything because it's the first chef to you service delivering locally sourced meals from award-winning chefs right to your door. Um, I just, like, you, you get on, you order, 
you have this list of chefs. I recently got the Middle Eastern Eggplant Parmesan with Harissa Tomato Sauce Crumbled Feta and Mozzarella from Chef Ainat Admani. I mean, how fancy is that? Right to your door. It's fresh, not frozen, with compostable, recyclable materials. And, it, I mean, fancy dining right at your house. Can you believe it? Experience chef-quality meals every week delivered right to your door. Go to cookunity.com slash tray or enter code tray before checkout for 55 0 50% off your first week. That's 50% off your first week by using code TREY or going to cookunity.com slash TREY. This Christmas, I'm very thankful for the recties. I'd like to uh, dive in right into some emails. We have some great uh, emails from the fans. Always hit us up at our email, correct, at treykenny.com. I, I saw this first email here. I thought this was pretty cool. I don't know if she's yanking my chain or not, but we got an email from this. Uh, she said, hello, my name is Goodness. So already, what do you guys believe that? Mm. Is she? Does she say she lives in California? No, she's from Nigeria. Oh, I will also accept Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. She says she lives in Chinatown of Nigeria. No, they don't have that. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Goodness from Nigeria. Wow, hi, Goodness. Uh, I don't have a topic to roast or anything, but she just wanted to let us know. She did want to say our current president's a joke. Okay. So remember, we were what was it South African? The people oh, haven't yeah. thrown haymakers. Yeah. I don't know they what Nigeria is doing, but she just wanted to send her oh, Spotify their wrapped. Their current president, not ours. Yes. Oh, I thought she was emailing you just to tell you that. Yeah, our I was president like, okay. By the way, joke. that president of yours is a <laughs> I joke. I was like, okay. <laughs> she says she loves the podcast. She got her Spotify wrapped here with her top podcast of uh, being up there. So thank you to uh, Goodness, who the email is Hef- Hefa Sabiza Chidiogo. Is the oh. is the email address she? So you know, I, I'm buying it. I'm buying that she's a, she's over there. I didn't know she's part of the Chidiongo family. Yes, yeah, they're great, great people. Love those people. Were we number one? We're number one podcast? Or? Um, number two. Two. <laughs> Appreciate but I the tell email. You one, I'll tell you who's number one is uh, from Kataya. She said, "I was you're, you're my number one listen to podcast this year. Top nine percent fan." She was at the Dallas show. Uh, she sat at the SMU campus, which was a few years ago. I guess she wasn't at the most recent Dallas show. Well, that's why so, she's not top again, 1%. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're getting some, we have decent fans. <laughs> this is bad. why Trey wants a five-star review so bad. Yeah, come it's on. It's hard to get good feedback. No, I do. We we did see, that's why that's pretty cool. We saw we have um, thousands of people have us as their top podcast. So thank you. It's very cool. And we got some also some great sheltered so should we dive into i'm sure we've done some sheltered things while overseas i thought of one on the sidewalk a couple days yeah i think it was yesterday i was telling you guys about it okay um, well lead us into it shelter kid we were shelter kid moment overseas edition not a mission trip yeah there you go spicy we were out to some i don't know somewhere before the show cocktail bar and it sounded like they were playing the shrek soundtrack they played a couple oh. songs in a row. I was like, is this just straight track? It just came out over here. Yeah. yeah, it's new. And anyway, the song I'm a Believer was playing. And um, if they're not familiar with it, how does it go? Oh, then I saw your face. Now I'm a believer. That's a classic. Good job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it took me back to something that happened to me in probably fourth, fifth grade, third grade. Whenever it came out, I remember my, my friends down the street, my neighbors, had went and gone and seen Shrek and they were going to see Shrek, but they weren't going to church a whole lot. These kind of neighbors. Mm-hmm. And anyway, I don't, I've never seen Shrek. I probably wasn't allowed to watch at the time. But all I know is they come back and all they're singing is, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm like, man, these people want to, I don't know what happened, but I mean, God has really turned their lives around. They just can't stop Where's singing and proclaiming his name. I'm a believer. It's like, this is awesome. <laughs> Guys, yeah, good for them. Like, that won't do, don't get it. They're like, he wrote in on one. <laughs> Right there. They've okay. been changed. It, it must have been a Palm Sunday service they saw or something. Mm. Wow. Damn I fully good. thought they were all saved. Wow. They were all just, uh, they were Christian now because they were singing that song. I didn't know it was in Shrek. And then, you know, a couple years later, I finally watched it. I'm like, I bet they, I bet they weren't saved. I mean, they were just singing I mean, they could have even Shrek. thrown in Hallelujah. I mean, that's a very confusing soundtrack. That's ultimately. true. Yeah. It's huge chant. Lord Farquaad. It's like, well, it's <laughs> Yahweh, but you I don't know, remember that Lord, one. You know. <laughs> Hebrew? They're saying Lord. <laughs> they're in it. Farquaad, huh? That's an amazing shelter kid thing. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. It was a when repressed did you, memory. When did you realize it was Shrek? I mean, probably when I saw Shrek. I mean, who knows how many years yeah, later. Wow. I was like, I got to go back to... The, they were heathens after all. To Joey's house. I got to reconcile that. Of thought course, his name team. was Joey. Yeah. Most heathens are named Joey. Yeah. I'd be careful. In Australia, a lot of Joey's around here. 
kangaroos. They also are a little bit of a heathen. I'm scared of them. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of like roadkill problems. I heard a guy tell me about People that. People hit kangaroos? Like de- like we would deer in the oh, United okay. States. Like it just oh. really messes up your car and it's annoying. Mm-hmm. Okay, how big? You saw <laughs> them, you saw them and petted them. them. Just... How big is a kangaroo? I feel like the males are pretty sizable. Like, and scary. I mean, like you can see their triceps and their traps and their shoulders. Yeah, they got the... They're like, stout. Their tail looks so strong. Taller than you? What's oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I mean, well, especially if they I mean, stood up on their tail. Jake. I mean, they're probably the same height as me. But. Yeah, I'm a little goblin. Um, <laughs> but About the females Katie's height, 6'6". 6'6"? 6'6", 130, some yeah. of the females. Yeah, they're scary little creatures. And not little. They're did you see any in the pouch? I did not see any currently in their mother's uterus. No, that was not something that was taking place. Mm. Is mm. that the uterus? That's kind of the whole point of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's turns out, yeah, when you're a kid, you think they just hop around with their little kid in there. But I think that's just kind of a temporary pouch. Oh. What's a uterus? <laughs> I don't. Jake, I, you in can seventh explain grade this. health, you brought it up. There was like a, there was a photo. I thought it was an avocado, but there was a photo. <laughs> in the pit. Somewhere in there. Was. There was a, they, they told me it was the urethra Franklin. That's how I was supposed to remember it. And I think that's the same thing as the uterus. Oh, yes, PCT, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got to respect it. Yeah, that's how I remember respect, it. That's how you, <laughs> urethra, respect it. Boom. Joey's. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There's a little sex ed for you guys. Uh, yeah. Is that, that, that's going to lead me into one of our Shelter oh, yeah, Kids sorry. stories. I forgot. Chris writes in, Shelter Kids story. Hello, Trey, Jake, Katie, Thomas, and family man Derek. I love the Shelter Kids story so much. I thought I was sheltered. Then I went to Christian college. I have many shelter kid stories. This is my favorite. I got a paperback I'd written about the Valley of Dry Bones. And Which is? <laughs> yeah, not a sheltered kid. It's in the Bible, Katie. Oh, okay. It's also in the part of the Lion King when the hyenas are like hiding in the dry bones. Mm-hmm. It could oh. be. It's probably a metaphor. In the, I'd love to read the paper. I see. And the professor had written bones to bones in cursive on the very top. This is some real deep... Okay. Shelter stuff. Okay, right? okay. Um, but both of the S's at the end kind of looked like an R. So it looked like he'd just written boner to boner <laughs> at the top, which I thought was pretty funny. I showed one of my good friends um, who was a very sheltered person. She read boner to boner as well out loud, but with no reaction at all. And she was clueless as to why this was funny. Because she was a full grown <laughs> college adult who'd never been told any of this, I gave her the birds and the bees talk right there. And then <laughs> she was shocked. <laughs> And my and at the very end of this conversation, after I explained everything to her, all she said was, "So this is why I can't wear spaghetti straps." <laughs> <laughs> um, love love the show. Thanks for the laugh. Um, Chris case, sounds like a comedian. Himself. In case you're wondering, just it is. My name is Chris, and it's a bonus story. I am a female, for what it's worth. So, oh, Chris, wow. Chris, thank you. Female she comedian. sent that okay. in. I was wondering, I was like, man, this guy gave this, uh, just a friend, the birds and bees talk? <laughs> That's, that is, like, could you think of a better reaction to that? It's like, this, all you're thinking, you're not like, wow, I never knew this, or that blows me away. How does this work? You're just like, that's why I couldn't wear tank toms? <laughs> I don't get it. That's yeah. why summer came back to wear a one piece? <laughs> okay, but can we go back to, what is bones to bones? It's a bunch of spiritual poetic it's stuff. It's Old Testament stuff. Is that like he did from good on the paper? From bones we come and from bones to we go. Yeah. So that was a compliment to his paper? No, oh. I think that was probably like, maybe that day they were talking about the bones in the Bible. Then they get assigned a paper about bones. And then, then my, uh, many shelter kids love bones. Paleontology. <laughs> it's just kind of, that Venn diagram is pretty big. <laughs> Something okay. of, yeah. I would yeah. love to know what. Still not clear here why that professor wrote bones to bones on his paper, but um, on her paper, sorry, you'd have Chris. to ask Chris. Yeah, I mean, she's was, she Adam's loves explaining rib. things to people. I would love to know what Chris's friend thought of everything before that talk, because it sounds like maybe she was complying, like, okay, I won't wear short shorts, I won't wear spaghetti straps. But I wonder what, why she thought she was doing She that. was just a rule follower. I totally understand. <laughs> like, okay. Sometimes you just don't ask. You just do it. You just, okay. They told me not to. Yeah. Maybe she's just like, I mean, they are weaker. So maybe there's a chance of it, like, right. you know, getting. You know, UV rays. Were you a one piece girly? Nah. Sorry, I said girly. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, I remember that was a big one with my little sister. Lots of battles on. They, they compromised with Tankini. At what age? Beautiful. <laughs> 
Too old. <laughs> like middle school? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Tankini. Yeah. I think I, I transitioned to the tankini sometime in elementary school. Went full-blown bikini in middle school. Okay. Whew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you getting, okay. Jake's getting uncomfortable. We got to move on. <laughs> Let's do... Bones uh, to bones. I do... Uh, I'm excited... For, oh, this is another quick uh, story. Someone, Sarah, wrote in, I accidentally broke the law. I'm just curious if you've all ac- accidentally ever broke the law on accident. That's on a very sheltered accident. thing to do. She said, when I was 17, my high school class went on a field trip to Canada. And if you didn't have a passport, you could use your birth certificate to cross the border. I'm, I asked my dad to get mine for me, and he put in an envelope to take. Well, on the way back, our bus was stopped by Border Patrol, of course, and each person had to take out their paperwork. Uh, she looked it over. And they would ask you a random question from it to confirm it was yours or whatever that reason was. Well, before she came to me, I happened to glance at it. And I realized in that moment that it was my sister's birth certificate, Ooh. who is 23 years older than me. Oh, my gosh. Bones <laughs> to bones. Yeah. Oh. In vitro to in vitro. Yeah. How are they doing this? I studied the information as quickly as possible, hoping she wouldn't notice. And when she came to me, she, she asked cramming if my, for a test yeah. Border <laughs> Patrol to get in the country. She asked my name was Rhonda, to which I replied, yes. And she handed it back to move on. And I illegally entered our country that day. Wow. Uh, wow. That's what a sheltered kid. You, you don't know what's possible until you're faced with the situation. <laughs> I feel like that's, situation. that's a dad move. Here's one of my kids' birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. They're not going to stop in 23 yeah. years. It sounds like he has 17 of them. I mean, I don't know. They're, yeah, he's been pretty lackadaisical in his life. If we lose yeah, one yeah. of them, it's, that's why we had a lot. <laughs> 23 years older. Wow. That poor woman. No wonder she had to study it. She barely knows her sister, probably. Yeah. She, I, don't, I don't know her middle she name. She never lived in the house with her. <laughs> yeah, I got to look into this. That's I don't fun. know if I've actually brought... The first thing that comes to mind is I accidentally went into Mexico one time. Not really, it was just one of the road trips I was on. We're like, let's go for a dip. And we looked up later. We're like, where were we swimming? We're like, oh, we got pretty far down the Rio Grande. I, I, that was in Mexico. And just no wall, nothing. We, no one stopped us. Just entered and exited Mexico. Like, oops, we're water. here. Yeah. Did that yeah. one time. I don't know if I've, I'm sure I've broken a lot Tighten the times. border. We got goblins going back and forth. Yeah. Goodness is going to have something to say. Our president, yeah. you know. <laughs> Katie, you ever broken a law? Yeah, when I, um, actually, pretty much every day, I accidentally go a little faster than the speed limit. Oh, okay. So, Daredevil. Yeah. I pretty How much How fast do you I go am. over? Let's say you're on the highway. It's chill. I can get going pretty fast. I try to do, not do more than 10 over. That's kind of the rule, right? I try to. Like, sometimes I just can't. <laughs> sometimes. Like foot. I mean, we got the Tesla. But I think that, that thing starts moving, and I can really. She will, I'm like, you're going 25 over right now. Please I can really down. get going. It's <laughs> not okay. Uh, yeah, I, we, we have the, 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 stroll, the stroller or the pram or whatever here the is like not approved. But I was like, it'll be fine. And so we're just, I guess we're using a legal stroller. So that's pretty. Okay. Uh, we we kind of roll the dice. Yeah. You guys remember Napster back in the day? Oh, uh, oh yeah. I was pretty illegal back then. Downloaded a lot yeah. of Christian oh, contemporary music. A, On Napster. Wire. Wow. That's a little hypocritical, I would say. Yeah. I was oh, like funny. illegally downloading Victory and Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did, though. I yeah. Yeah. Imagine first, like a uh, no young point. man arrested deleting, <laughs> 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 downloads a million dollars worth of CCM music. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's the best case scenario. Heart was in the right the place. Line. Yeah, heart was in the right place. Uh, okay, we got. Oh, okay, let's do one video here because the all she said here was uh, confusing cannabis with bath salts. I'm excited. Okay, what this video can possibly mean. How? Yeah. Okay. Here it comes. Hey guys, uh, I have a sheltered kid moment to share with you. So when I was in college, I was an RA my junior year. My best so friend was also an RA. We went to a small Christian college in upstate New York. And so that particular year, the RDs decided like everyone, we're gonna give all the RAs training about different drugs. So we go into the presentation and for some context, I think this that same year or the year before, there was a big story in the news about this guy in Florida who had consumed bath salts, this drug mm, called bath salts. That was a big story. And how that. it had like basically the effects of it made it so that he would attack people and like eat their faces or something crazy, like turned him into a cannibal. 
Did it? So this is kind of like... Yes. <laughs> Do you remember that story? I remember that story. It turned him into like a zombie. It turned him in, and I guess he was like in like invincible. They were like tasing him and trying <laughs> yeah. to, and he like couldn't be subdued and was like eating people. I remember there I remember there's a real paranoia of like if this drug gets around, right? Yeah. People just eating people left and right. That was my introduction to bath salts. I'd never heard of it before oh. the Florida guy. Uh so I was sick. I I missed that story. In the back of my mind for some reason. We're in the presentation and the RD starts talking about cannabis. And I'm like forgetting that this drug in, in the news is called bath salts. And I'm just thinking like cannabis sounds like cannibal. <laughs> like they're talking about how this is like prevalent on our campus. Like what the heck is going on? And I look at my friend and she is also simultaneously thinking the same thing. Oh, so wow. we're whispering about Both it, like, what is going on? Like, people are on these hardcore drugs. Like, is someone going to just attack me at night as I'm walking across campus and, like, try to eat my face? Like, what is going on? <laughs> eat my face. So we look at our other friend and we're like, are they talking about this drug in the news? And she just, like, she's, like, trying not to laugh. She tells, like, the dean of students or whatever, he's sitting there and he was like, He's like a really funny guy. So he just was like cracking up and he was like, you know, this is why we chose you guys for our, as RAs. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway. Cause you're dorks. We did learn from them that cannabis is just marijuana in case you still weren't sure um, what I was talking about. No, but um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's still one of our favorite stories to tell, even though it's slightly embarrassing. Um, and yeah. Anyway, thanks for letting me share and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I hope your tour um, down under went well. Thank you very much. Hey guys. Girls um, are so funny, man. That 30 seconds ago, she was done talking. Whew, was like, well, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for allowing me to send this. Call me back it. if you didn't get this. Yeah, it's about 4.30. <laughs> I, I, I do like the idea of her... Her and that RA just being on guard. Some guy like tries to kiss her, and she's like, "He's eating my." He's got cannibalism. Oh, the fact. Have that, you been smoking cannibals? Yeah, <laughs> the fact that both her and another person she knew were thinking the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like, is this a cannibal? Yeah, bath this salts. is the cannibal thing. This is it. RA. Right, I mean, you you again talking about Venn diagrams. RA sheltered kid. Yeah, they don't know anything. Yeah, that's. That's a I had a little one. cannabis mix up back in the day. I was one thing I was very early on. I was not sheltered from the office. I watched the office when it came out when we were in high school, which is very fun. I feel like it molded me. It was nice, but I didn't get a lot of the jokes. Probably season two, season three, something. Uh, there was like a drug bust and Dwight is showing people marijuana and he's like seeing it like people recognize or what the response is. They show it to Creed. He's like, what is this? And Creed's like, that is, he, he says the exact strain of marijuana. He's like, it's cannabis indica northern lights. And <laughs> Dwight's like, no, it's marijuana. <laughs> and I had no idea what that, I was like, that's a weird, I don't understand that at all. Oh, really? When I was in high school. Yeah, I had no idea what that meant, the word cannabis. So You guys didn't have like dare or like... I don't think they used the proper word. I don't think they were saying cannabis at Dare. They're like, don't do that that weed. <laughs> yeah, weed. You want to be like this guy? Yeah. One you want to be like eating people's faces? The, she sent the article to which was nice. It's the, the man, the Florida man who went around eating people's faces. His name was Rudy Eugene. Is he wow. alive still? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, the, he, he, he ate their face. Still he's a like he's well fed and he's still yeah. a cannibal. He plays linebacker now. He's really good. Yeah, he's aggressive. All pro. <laughs> Rudy Eugene. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get a lot out of Dare back in the day? Like no, wasn't that when the cool school. like high school kid like I just remember like like an edgy high school. All kid. I got out of it was like I can't wait to get to high school. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they gave us pencils I... that said like don't do drugs something like that and then when you sharpened it it would sh sharpen down to just do drugs i remember yes. that from dare that oh. was a great bit that's about oh. it yeah that was a classic where you just you char purposely sharpen it yeah. down real look, low look at my dare pencil yeah do I, drugs. i didn't do that shocker mm. i don't really remember anything about dare honestly not good that's not good yeah not good uh, okay, let's get to uh, we have the last interview of this interview series uh, this one's kind of fun because it's uh, an old friend of mine who's blown up this year, and his name is Corey Kent. Welcome to the pod, Corey Kent. All right. Woo. Katie, clap, please. Oh. 
She's not as excited. Wow. <laughs> not a I, I said I'm just woo. Uh, Corey Kent, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. How you doing? Man, good. Good to see you again. Been a long time. Been a and, long uh, time. Go dude, Pokes, right? Go Me Pokes, Corey, baby. Come on. Small, we're in the same fraternity, Beta Theta Pi. Mm-hmm. Wow. Same year? You are a year below me. Yep. Uh, got yeah, got you, hazed by Trey. That was good. Yep, hazed. <laughs> oh, man. Ruthless stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Did yeah. you, do you ever come across people? Let's talk about frat life. Because when I, I'm always hesitant. I know you are too, probably. No, I mean, no. you're a little country world. There's probably a bunch of, there might be some fraternity brothers out there, but you're working with people in LA and New York, and you're like, I was in a fraternity. And yeah, the, they immediately think, like, our, our fraternity was like, required us to do Bible studies, basically. I mean, it was, a, it was not your typical fraternity. No, I don't even really know how to... I don't even bother telling people because then I would have to go into the explanation of like how the fraternity was different than their stereotype. And I just like, whatever. I don't, yeah. even, I don't even try to bring that up anymore because it's just too complicated. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I run into people all the time. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of... Uh, really successful business owners that were OSU betas. Like the amount of people that I run into that I have met completely separate just through music in some way or another that, you know, will play private shows or whatever. And they had, they knew that I went to OSU, but they had no idea the connection past that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been cool to just run into people and have that extra little thing in common. Yeah. Like, that's about as far life. as it goes. Yeah, I know. Katie, Katie, you like betas, right? Yeah, I married one. <laughs> well, you well, Katie went to Georgia Tech. Uh huh. And you, who, yeah. what fraternity did you hang out with? It was I hung out with Betas. I guess I just had a thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> had a type. <laughs> hey, those dragons will get you, man. Ew. That's what we were. No, that's what we were. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gross. Jake, uh, you weren't in a. Was there a frat over at a Southern Bible U or? Uh, almost. Uh, no, we didn't even have them. It was just like basically the dorm you get assigned to is like basically your just fraternity. Like heaven, yeah. yeah, it was like that was like the like I'm making a homecoming float for my dorm that I care so much about. You know, what do you have any famous uh, <laughs> alumni? Oh, do no. you have any? I honestly, you're I would, it. I think, I Let's think go, dude. Me. Let's yeah. build you up, bro. Yeah, have they asked you to come back and speak? No, I don't oh, know. You gotta if, be close. I don't know if they loved me there. So oh, I uh, okay. oh, the only <laughs> the only C I ever got was in a class called social media marketing. Um, nice. And they hated that I was on social media. So I don't think it would like vindicate them if they had me come back and speak about social yeah. media. That's Boy, like is, uh, that's like the, me not being accepted to the Oklahoma State School of Music. <laughs> were were you not? No, dude. I ended wow. up in the business school because they were like, yeah, there ain't no place for you here, man. You can't read music. You can't do X, Y, Z. That's amazing. I still have a screenshot from an email when I was I was making videos, viral videos, and I applied. I was like, I should get an internship. That's what you're supposed to do. It was like social media intern, probably some whack like minimum wage. I just got back an automated no. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <laughs> I, can, I can tweet. <laughs> Did, does OSU, Oklahoma State, they ever hit you up? Or have they not? I mean, I mean, um, you know, a couple of years ago, way before like the the really big successes that we've had recently, the you know there've been some like um, I guess some of the leadership hired us to come in and play a concert for like the board of regents or something like that. Oh, like just that kind was... of the the powers at at B right with, that make decisions within OSU. They hired us for like a dinner or something. But outside of that, that's about it. That's about it, man. We uh, um, where you at? Come on, OSU. I don't know. I don't know. Where are you at? Beta beta homecoming concert? Where are you at? I mean, oh, <laughs> that's got to be. That's got to be coming. That's got, yeah. The beta is a big concert every year. I remember. You played that one year. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, we. I feel like for a handful of years, we just helped kind of put it together. I got my buddy, um, William Clark Green, to come in one year, and then I ended there up writing go. some some hits for him, which was cool, and then kind of launched into the national scene. And I don't know if they're even – I don't know if they're even doing it still, which is sad, but man, college life is not like it used to. When I was first, I think you missed this. My first year there in the uh, fraternity, the only frat like thing we did was like a fight night where we just yes. random guys would get in the middle of the big atrium and just box each other. Did y'all? No, I, was, I didn't miss that, but oh, it was nobody, your okay. nobody would fight, uh, would fight 
Scott or me because we wrestled for some like for some reason they thought that translated to boxing and so <laughs> like what if he like, grabs us like the Jake Paul yeah. later yeah. <laughs> but no I remember um, one of my my best friends from high school that we both went to OSU uh, and were betas he got in there through one punch and his shoulder came out of his socket like one <laughs> missed punch shoulders out the socket and Whiffed. I was like oh this is not what fraternity dudes need to be doing right now you know. But it was oh, hilarious. Yeah. There's I, no I way remember. they still do that, right? No, that was the. I think my sophomore year, Corey's freshman year, was like the last year, and they. Yeah, yeah. that's they probably keep... where, from what I've heard, you guys are really successful, like singing and performing. Does that make sense? That you yeah. weren't good at fighting. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it's like so. we need to specialize. Well, we relied on Fair our feet. We, yeah, <laughs> we quit. There, that Fair is enough. one thing. OSU had a lot of musical events. I never really had heard of a college that had that many <laughs> musical events. Well, you went to Georgia Tech, you nerd. So, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you're, you're clicking around on your TI-84. We were, we were, TI-89. We were creating beautiful musical talent. Did you guys, Corey and Trey, did you guys ever share the stage, see each other perform? Do so anything musically say, back in the day? I, really, I was really roped into the whole theatrics of the the theater scene and dancing. You never really did one, did you? I did. Well, as like a freshman, you know, you don't really get a choice. Like, they, yeah, they, yeah. They but the folly. rest, did, what, why didn't you do the others? Were you just, you're like not having it or. I just didn't. I, I just, I felt like it was not my personality. Like you have to kind of be able to, in those more theatrical things, I feel like you have to kind of have a bigger personality as well as the musical thing. And I'm like, so introverted by nature and laid back that I was just I just didn't feel like it was a good fit for me. So I just left that to the the people with uh, the you know the bigger world, the personalities like Trey Kennedy. You know, I mean, and plus you had your business school. You were very focused on your business. Oh, right. You know, super so. focused. No, not not very uh, focused at school. Yeah, but. we were just talking to oh, something. Oklahoma's produced a ton of country talent. Obviously, it's Garth. Garth. Mm-hmm. Good. Oklahoma State. That's more. the guy. Um, so many more. Now Corey Kent. Um, and so, yeah, just congrats on all the success. What, I always, Thanks, music man. always is fascinating because music, very specifically, it's like it kind of all it takes is one. If you can find that one crazy hit, then change your life. Yeah. Um, and it's like with content, it can be a little similar, but not quite the same. Like you, I, I can think of one or two videos that went crazy viral that definitely like launched some things and helped me out. But Nothing like music. I mean, you've you've had the number one song in the country. You went from, you know, kind of unemployed in the music world to, you know, full fledged touring yeah. the country, selling out shows. What is, and all in like twelve months, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. What is that experience like? Oh man, it's it was insane. You know, like I don't know. There's no way that most people probably followed my my journey to right now. But leading up to, um wild as her which is the song that exploded for us uh i i had to kind of go back to square one um when the world shut down and and music wasn't an option i went to work for a pavement company in dallas texas and i was still working at the pavement company when i recorded wild as her which is crazy to think of and it, you know we didn't have a record deal or um, we didn't have an agent we didn't have really anything but I was still putting in the work and um, working as hard as I could in music to the degree that the world would let me. And so we put this song out and it ended up going, uh, it ended up becoming like a gold record independently, like as an independent band based out of Texas. Um, all of my band and crew are Oklahoma born and raised. They're all still living in Oklahoma. And then, you know, I, I ended up in Texas after marrying a Texan. Um, but to watch that happen independently was, I mean, I would be lying to you if I even thought that that was possible at the time. That's uh, insane, man. Because wasn't it a, did it, did it happen pretty quickly or was it kind of a slow burn? Because I feel like I've been following you from far because I know you and I just follow you on things. And I remember when that song came out, I was like, oh, this one's, it's not like I was like, this is going to be a hit. But I just remember thinking like, I really like this one. Yeah. And it's wild when a song can just, everyone's on the same page like we like this was it kind of a a slow takeoff or did it happen pretty it was it like overnight it was not like a quick out of the gate thing it was um like the i would say within the first two months we started to see things take off put the song out had a great response you know our our core fan base loved it and then 
what happened was one day I got a call from my manager that it was basically like, hey, dude, you're, you're having a moment. I was like, what does that mean? You know, what are you talking about? Hey, your song is going viral. And I was like, how is that possible? I don't even feel like we've created content that would be, <laughs> would be possible to go viral, right? Like that's admittedly like a fault of mine that I've had to really work hard at being good at creating content that's not just like, look at me singing my song, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so what happened was the, the sound itself became trending audio. Yeah. So it wasn't me and my, uh, account that made a video that people reposted like crazy or, or a trend that I started. It was the sound itself is what people were making videos to. Mm -hmm. And that was a crazy recipe because I feel like the song outkicked the brand at that point, which is not always the case. Like the song became bigger than, than everything that we'd done up to that point, which has been cool in a lot of ways, because I think a lot of people that a lot of musicians that get um, traction online or social media wise, they become almost more known for socials than they do for their music. And so for us, the exact opposite has happened where people know our music before they know us social media wise. And so a lot of people are just now finding out that you know, we're on our second radio single. They're like, oh, that guy is the guy that sings Wild as Her. Yeah. They're yeah, just yeah. putting two and two together, which has been, you know, I think in certain it's a ways of, it's a yeah. thing to overcome. But in certain ways, it's really great, like raising three kids and being able to live a pretty normal life, but also enjoy the successes that have come from having the number one hit song in country music. It's been pretty cool. Yeah. Well, congrats, man. And yeah, it's, I remember seeing a lot of the training audio. I think, first of all, that's obviously an awesome song. It's very fun to listen to. Wild as her, though, is kind of perfect because you, you had a lot of those, you know, those little Instagram gals, you know, they'd just be posting from their, like, suburb house, like, I am a wild, free woman. It's like, wow, <laughs> relax. Dude, like, it's, and it helps, it's you know, hilarious. get some more of the content out there, yeah. The amount of people that will walk up to us at a meet and greet and say, you know you wrote that song about me, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a like, wild gal. You're, the, like, you're right. the prototype. Like, you are exactly what I had in mind, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> So. I could see it though. I could see yeah, you're Katie, up. a few days without a shower, just head out the window, <laughs> like, yes, I'm wild. <laughs> That's oh, what uh, you know, working the pavement will do to you. It's just like, ah, oh, I'm just so distracted. I'm thinking about some 34 year old named Jennifer mm-hmm. in Milwaukee. <laughs> that's who I do it for. That is. <laughs> yeah. Mm, you know? no, it's been funny, but you know, I think that's the the power of that song was even even the the girls who didn't live that life or who didn't uh who who aren't really in line with that or those those personality traits that's who they wanted to be so even mm. the like people who genuinely were being described in the song as well as people who lived a suburban jennifer from manhattan life were yeah, like yeah. i wish i was a little more free-spirited wow, and adventurous great. and so i think that's why that's part of why the song works For sure yeah struck a chord. everybody Definitely. could insert themselves in some way Definitely. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Uh, end of the year. It is here. It's the holidays, but sadly for a lot of people, it's maybe not the time of year you look forward to. It's stressful. You maybe mm-hmm. have the seasonal blues. Uh, it can be a lot this time of year. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. You know, you, you, you counteract. Plus one minus one. <laughs> Maybe it's a minus, you add a plus. Wow, how many years of counseling did you do? That's, a, that's awesome. <laughs> wow, how uh, many years of counseling? Therapy did you do? can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something to look forward to, feel grounded, give you tools to manage everything going on. If you're trying to, if you're thinking about trying therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I've done therapy, it's really helped. It's entirely online. BetterHelp is. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Just last night, this is going to sound made up, but I don't know why I asked Rachel this. I was like, if you were impoverished and could only get out of poverty via the internet, how would you do it? Just a fun little game we play, I guess. And I was like, but you can use everything you know now. And she is a licensed counselor. She said, I would do better help. I said, mm. great. I will use that tomorrow. Yeah. So, wow. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Wow. Rachel, so Rachel believes in it. And Katie, I also believe please, in it too. could you help them yeah. with that? Read? So in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash correct today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash correct. When you're abroad for a month, you got to really think about the necessities. What do I pack? I've never thought about being a woman for a month. 
Oh, you mean overseas? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. You know, you got to bring your panties. You got to bring your <laughs> pantyhose, probably. I don't know. What's what my cup need. size? But I know <laughs> I need my essential. I need my razor. I can't become some burly guy. You kind of need Harry's, it right now, and honestly. Yeah, no, super shame. <laughs> and I'm using Harry's. With Harry's, you get high quality German engineered blades right to your door. Every order saves you money compared to that big brand most guys are used to buying. Get them as low as $2 per blade at harrys.com slash tray. I, uh, I love Harry's, the branding, everything. It's great. It looks clean. It works. I have the, I have used the styling paste. I use the creams, the lotions, whatever, dude. If They've they make it, it in liquid, we've got it. Yep. Uh, and travel size. You can get a subscription that saves you time and money with Harry's. Get it started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash tray. That's harrys.com slash tray for a $3 trial set. Uh, you can cancel your subscription anytime. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry. So try Harry's today at harrys.com slash tray. If you don't know by now, I don't know what to tell you. But what's a game where no one wins? <laughs> the waiting game. Recties. Indeed is the place where you can hire and attract. You You hire people there by attracting, interviewing, and hiring them all in one place. And I love Indeed. Um, I've used it to hire great people. When it comes to hiring, you don't want to wait for great talent to find you. You want to find them first. With Indeed, you can use their instant match where over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment sponsor that the moment they sponsor a job. More than three million businesses worldwide use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Worldwide, I bet I bet, I bet Australia uses Indeed. I Good day, mate. They do. I'm gonna tell you guys the best uh, best thing you've ever heard. Ready? Once again, the waiting game is the worst game. Yeah. I need to keep reiterating. I it lost you guys. Too, yeah. I, the waiting game Nobody is the worst. And you don't have to that. wait with Indeed. You don't. <laughs> yeah, yes. And Tell that them is how, how to you start hiring. Yep. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash tray. All for good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash tray. And it's strong. Last Saturday yes. of the year, Katie. Go don't make, don't to Indeed.com slash tray. <laughs> focus, focus. God in there? Support the show. <laughs> Indeed, God come? By saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Trey. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. Oh, you need and Indeed. Indeed. Last one of the year. Whew, that was a waiting game. Your boy's been missing some of the American food. Because I don't know if you've heard. I've been like in Australia, New Zealand for a while. Ugh, hate to brag. I got bit by the travel bug. <laughs> Darn it. But Cook Unity, you talk about great food. Oh, I've been using this thing. I can't wait to get home and use it again. It's the first chef to you service, deli- delivering locally sourced meals from award-winning chefs right to your door. Think about, you know, you deliver food to your door. What if it was, uh, I don't know, uh, spiced carrot coconut soup with potatoes and fresh cilantro from Chef Pierre, okay? You know what I'm talking about? I got some pan-seared chicken breast with shallot vinaigrette. It was unbelievable. Delivered right to my door. And it's cheaper than other delivery options still. Go to cookunity.com slash tray or enter code tray before checkout for 550% off your first week. Uh, the food is unbelievable. No cooking required for a chef quality dining experience right at home. Uh, unlike other meal services, Cook Unity is a chef collective bringing exciting culinary talent straight to your table. Food arrives fresh, never frozen in packaging that's compostable, recyclable, and reusable. Uh, of course, they've got stuff for uh, vegan, paleo, pescarian, you name it. And go to cookunity.com slash tray or in a code tray before checkout for 50% off your first week. Experience chef quality meals every week delivered right to your door. That's 50% off your first week by using code tray or going to cookunity.com slash tray. I always like talking to uh, other people who are also doing the, the tour life. And yeah. so I want to know like... What is, uh, what's tour look like for you, you know, before and after the big song? How is tour life? Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy because, you know, we were pretty much, um, I mean, we were touring all over the country, but we were doing it in what I would call like a regional way. We were in a van and trailer uh, for years, and even when we had our number one hit, the night we celebrated our number one hit, it was, you know, get back in the 12-passenger van and drive eight hours through the night back to, to Dallas. So... Things have changed, but they've only changed really in the last like four or five weeks. We got a tour bus uh, because we are going. On, we're on tour for the last three or four weeks. We've been on tour with Jason Aldean, um, which is just crazy to even say. Like I didn't know Jason. I'd never met him. He heard our song on the radio and was like, "I want that kid on tour with me." And cool. so it, it was. It was awesome moment. I remember getting the phone call. I'm sitting in my in my driveway. My wife's uh, in the passenger seat, and we got three kids passed out in the back. And I hung up the phone. She's like, is everything okay? I was like, yeah, just, 
we just accepted a 40 something city tour with Jason Aldean. Wow. And, uh, we freaked out for a minute and then we were like, Oh shoot, don't wake the kids up. Yeah. yeah. Don't get too wild. Yeah. I freak out, you know? Um, but life has really, it's, it's changed in a, in a pretty quick way. Obviously Trey, like you knew that I was grinding at music even before I even got to college. So it's in a lot of ways, it's been a really slow burn, but to the general public and and really I feel like my career started post COVID because I had to completely restart in every in every aspect. So touring's been great though. The the tour bus life is like it's hard it's it's gonna be impossible to go back. You know, we're getting like a full night's sleep, which never yeah. happened. We're getting to, you know, somebody else is driving, which is a game yeah. changer. Do you got uh, do you have your own bed in the back or are you bunking with the boys? No, we're bunking. Or you know, uh, it's still it's still grassroots. You know, we're not, uh, we're not oh, big time yet. First. You know, we're not quite that big time. But I got the uh, I got the bed in the back mainly because I am claustrophobic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got freaked out by those bunks, man. Y'all, bunks how many so dudes cool. you got on the bus? Uh, we roll with eight. So you have yeah, eight. We got eight. Eight. Okay. Eight and four empty bunks. So we bring a lot of riders out on the road, or our management will come out with us sometimes, or. Uh, or Jimmy, who wants to come drink beer sometimes. I know. We st- I started to just bring my buddies. I'd be like, hey, you just want to come ride the bus for a couple nights and hang? And he's like, sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Underrated. That's, That's awesome. Has your man. wife been out on the bus yet? Not yet. It's still, pr- it's still very fresh. You know, okay. obviously, like, this is, this is our fourth week on the bus. So okay. um, we have the – we kind of mapped out the fun dates that – we'd bring her on. So we're going to do some, uh, we got like two or three weeks on the West coast later on this year. So we're going to do that and get some off time in California, some off time in Phoenix. And then, um, I have like one specific show mapped out where I'm going to bring just my oldest daughter, just cause I think she's like five and it'd be just such like a cool little, you know, core memory to, to build on and make her feel special. And yeah, we're, we're getting creative on, how often can we be together as a family while doing this thing? Because that's really yeah, that's, yeah, the that's biggest tough. Challenge, I mean, man. It's, sounds it's like tough. my wife with the she didn't she doesn't want to come hang out in Cincinnati and Indianapolis, but Phoenix and L.A. She's coming. What, what if I need your support there? Well, okay, last tour no, I was at every came, single show. Okay, yeah. So did Katie? So we just had a kid. Before we had a kid, she came to every show. It was a lot of fun. How this has been yeah. my first experience. You know, I obviously she came out on the first tour. There'd be times we apart. I didn't like that. And now we have a kid. So now um, you with three kids who've been, you know, obviously been a dad for years. How's that been? Because now with all the success, you're touring, you're going all over the country with yourself, Jason Aldean. How's, how's that feeling, being away from family? family? Man, it, it gets tougher with, with every, every passing month, it seems like. Just because, you know, as, as they're getting older, they're processing more. They're like able to understand how long I'm actually gone, which is tough. But, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to like be able to in between runs, I'm flying home every chance I get. Um, so it's really not as dramatic as it would look on paper, but finding the balance is that I think is the toughest part because, um, really, I think that's like an impossible task. I don't, I don't think that you can actually find balance within that. All you can do is constantly strive to improve on that uh, until you get to a certain point where you just can say no to whatever you want. And we're a long way from that. And um, yeah, I think that's probably the, the toughest, like most heart wrenching part of the whole thing is, is just having to, you can't be two places at once. And we're not at the point yet where we can have that second bus and just bring the family out and, you know, also, also that's probably just not even what's best for them, even though selfishly like that might be what I want. Uh, there's just a lot of factors, man. It's just, yeah, it's it never tough. It, it, it was yeah. never something that I like went through in my mind prior to being here. Right. So we never filtered, you know, our family life through career. It was always just like we filtered career through life and through family life. So I get why people that. wait to have kids, but also, you know, it's, we're, we're going through, um, what I would consider to be like the toughest part of my career also in the most demanding part of having kids, right? Like in that same season. So it's tough, but 
we also just get the best of both worlds. Like I have no room to complain. I got a, a beautiful, healthy family and I have a career that's going in the right way. So For sure. it's just, it's champagne problems, man. Yeah. Do you think Thomas is almost six months. Do you think that's like the right age to bring him out just by himself with you? <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring like, him out there. Yeah, it's like a bonding. Jake, Jake will open, so. and then I'll ha- as he comes off, I'll hand him to you. <laughs> I'll give you the mic. You give me the baby. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be like super like bonding. Work. He'll remember it. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do? Me? What? What? Whatever I want. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? No, I know that the travel's tough. I heard a quote on a podcast recently about comedians. This applies to you too, obviously. Just like we're, it's like we're not. We're not paid to perform. We're paid to travel. Mm. Because perform is the fun part. But it's, I yeah. thought of that today. We we just got back from I, you know, fly, so layover flight, and I just like, yeah, eight hours of my day today is just getting home. Yeah, that's just part of my job. It's so yeah. lame. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It kind of is. And I that's the truth, man. It it that's the part of it that feels like work is is all the in right. between. Yeah, because then like really, what you're getting paid to do is what it, it's like. We're playing a show like that right. doesn't that doesn't even sound like work and it no. really doesn't feel it's like it. you probably part. get off stage you're probably like me dude like you get off stage and you're like oh yeah and we got paid oh and that, for sure yeah yeah that's cool i forgot about that i would have done this <laughs> don't tell anybody but i would have done this for nothing you know that I, is I the love what part, i do for sure um, but dude it's been cool to keep up with you and see like how you took the the online f- presence that you built to a tangible ticket selling thing like as somebody that has worked their tail off to sell tickets, that is a feat. Like Thank that you, is man. a massive accomplishment, dude. That's Thank so cool. You, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's just, I'm sure. Yeah, we can relate. I'm, it's been very surreal too. I was just making videos trying to figure out what in the world I was, where I was going in life. And then I got hit up by an agent saying, Hey, you, you should go on tour and sell tickets. And I was like, I hadn't, I didn't think I, that was possible. And <laughs> thank goodness people were buying tickets. So uh, every, you you get it. Selling tickets is nerve wracking. You every time you put it up, new city, you're like, is this gonna? Are people still? I remember yeah. when we first started selling. I wasn't convinced they would still show up. They'd be like, it's sold out. I was like, but I just are they gonna be here? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I buy tickets stuff. for fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Happen, and you'd be surprised. About five or ten percent of them do. Apparently, yeah. That's what's quite wild too. Every show about five or ten percent just don't show. Which makes sense. Life happens to random people. Yeah, yeah. A lot of moms. Um, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, women. You know how women are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Taking uh, care of their family. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, but yeah, it's been surreal. It's been wild. And, and like you were saying too, it's crazy. I just feel like I I know of a lot of people doing cool stuff. You mentioned Wyndham Clark, Go Pokes. He just won mm-hmm. uh, which, which U.S. Open? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, golf? just that small so tournament. Right. Yeah, that little, that little yeah, one, no one cares. Really and then uh, we, you mentioned, dude, you are buddies with the Dude Perfect guys, or at least some of them? Yeah, Kobe and Corey. I mean, we're like basically next door neighbors. Wow. Um, and we, and you, we, I hung out with them when they came to Kansas City a while back for the NFL draft. Jake hung out with them last week. Yeah. I missed it because I had a show. What, but, what was wild is I was, uh, when I first moved back to Texas in 2019, I, ended up renting a house from uh from kobe wow like, how, how weird is it's that a, he like he laid the pavement at the dude perfect studio actually yeah <laughs> dude perfect was my landlord you know what i mean that was a weird moment in life yeah. where uh no it was cool though um yeah kobe ended up marrying uh a girl that we went to school with at oklahoma state right, so the dude perfect rental there's just there's 16 like basketball hoops everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know it's a dude perfect house. It was weird. There were cameras quarters. everywhere. Cameras everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it has been wild. really cool to see you know everybody kind of carve out their own lane, whether that led to like spotlight or not. You know. I've, yeah. Just, it, it, it's it's been cool. You know, people are starting families and and. Uh, People that I never really thought would start families are starting families. I'm like, man, good for you. Like, life's really, really 180 yeah. for you. Um, and people are are growing up, and some aren't. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's sure. just been cool to watch. You know, everybody kind of go their separate ways and and find success in their own in their own lanes. Yeah, it is insane to start to. We're talking about all the college days. You're like, so much has happened since then because feeling quite old. What 
you we're we've hired our first babysitter. Our baby boy's about to be six months old. We're gonna freedom, do the first babysitter. Baby. Let's go. That and so freedom right really there. Old. And Katie's texting this one, girl. Yeah. Mm. And she's like 19, I think. Just be, and I'm thinking in my head, like, what else? Am I supposed to do something different? Like, what does she need to know? Like, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> right? like, hey, can you come? Did over? I tell you that your brother's girlfriend who's like 22 or something? I was like, I found myself being nervous talking to her. I was like, I don't want to come off like. I don't want to ask too many questions. Yeah, I don't want to be like lame. Oh, <laughs> brutal. I had a friend um, yesterday I was talking to and she was like, yeah, after college, she moved to California and she's moving back. It's crazy. She's been gone for nine years. Uh, <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. what? Do you, uh, so a big part of the road life too, with you have a kid, we come back and we, we like, we battle on who deserves the crown of like most tired. Who's like most tired. <laughs> Do you do you and your wife do this? Oh yeah, the crown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you ever won or? No, never won. <laughs> never they, they won. Have three kids. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> no, she definitely. Uh, you know, and this is like kind of a cheesy thing to say or cliche, cliche a little bit, but like the especially with like touring musicians or or doing what you do, like the rock star is the person that holds down the fort at home because that's the that is so much more exhausting i mean even driving through like i'm i'm tired but i'm not exhausted you know what i mean like on all fronts when you don't talk to a a human over the age of four for like three weeks at a time yeah your your mental bandwidth is zapped there's no there's no comparison you know i'm out at least what we do is is really enjoyable like it's draining in its own ways but you know it's also like the thing that recharges me so no, I don't right, have right. I don't have anything uh, on her when it comes to that. You it know? is tough. I feel like when I come home and because Katie's only yeah spent time like you said only talking to like little humans who she's with a baby. It, it, it always feels a little bit like you ever see those the footage of they like we found this man in a boat for three hundred days and he's kind of like uh, that's what rattles. I, yeah, he's a little shook up and they're kind of like what's your name and he's struggling to speak a little bit. That's yeah, kind of yeah. Katie when I come home every week and she's been stranded <laughs> so, at home. Yeah, she's that's fired funny. up, ready to talk. Look at her; she's got a weird look in her eyes. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! How did you guys meet? I don't know if I know that story, Trey. Like, how did? Yeah, you, thanks for asking. Wife, Katie and yeah. I met on Instagram. Okay, we met the old-fashioned way. We <laughs> old-fashioned. We met. <laughs> we are old. In 2018. Uh-huh. So before I was, before I'd ever even thought about touring or anything, and I was like just making videos, doing my thing, and definitely He's DMing a bunch of girls. And oh, I responded. just firing them up. She del- she answers 2:15 in the morning. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was. Uh, it, I'm sure she was a little. It was definitely back then where you saw I was like verified and had some followers, but like it was still unclear. I didn't. This is six years ago. I didn't You're like, know who he was. is this guy making a living? What's this guy doing? Yeah. Mm. And I just saw a cute girl and shot my shot. And we, long story short, I was, uh, we, we met, she lived in Atlanta. We met, took her out to dinner. We just hit it off out, out all night. Fell in love. Oh. Trey and I also yeah. met. <laughs> Yeah. On Instagram in 2018 too. Yeah, sometimes oh, you well. get the DMs confused. Yeah, yeah. yeah. send me yeah. some late night ones. <laughs> it's like I love your cute white, pale skin. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's yeah, that's me. It goes, yeah. and you're like, like I, I was like, that, that wasn't meant for you, but it is. <laughs> and that's how we met. And uh, <clears throat> so I forgot what I was going to say. It's been great. It's uh, everyone always assumes when I first say that they're like, oh, she just hit you up. Right, because like she followed, you. she didn't have a clue who I was. I did not, which I think is good. I actually, That's the great. only reason I really <laughs> responded was I was convinced that we like had a mutual friend because it was just so. That's not totally true. It is true. <laughs> she was thought I was attractive. <laughs> I would hope <laughs> okay, you signed well, up for this. <laughs> yeah, but I just was like, it was just so random. I was like, there's no way this is just like so out of random. The but it is. He literally found me on the explore page. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I assume I, I'm you, explorer. Okay, Trey. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you were hitting up a girl at an engineering school. Probably not used to being hit on. So she's like, oh, I assume we have mutual friends. Yeah, like, no yeah. one would just flirt with me. She just sent back her, like, tutoring rates. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's. Yeah. That's I mean, it is. But, it's shockingly random, but. Not, I mean, not really, though. I mean, that, that actually, in a weird way, is kind of like old-fashioned now i mean it's not a game <laughs> right. i feel like everybody like you met on instagram you dinosaur like yeah, that's that's jake, jake met his girl through a podcast i mean that's 
It's kind of cut. Yeah, I don't mind. Basically, yeah. yeah. Really? Cutting yeah. edge. Need to write a country song about it. <laughs> <laughs> Met my girl the old fashioned way. <laughs> yeah. Instagram.com. Yeah. <laughs> wow, dude. Back no, the, and y'all, did y'all meet at OSU? Been... Did you and your wife meet at OSU? Or... Yeah. Oh, through, right. Yeah, yeah. Through a, a mutual friend, just like our freshman year. Um, but didn't. We were in denial for like three years, you know, mm. of like dating other people and being best friends and preferring to hang out with each other over the people we were dating. It was kind of a mess. Ah, and then, yes, uh, the old best friends. It's like, yeah, <laughs> weird. My, yeah, never mind. We're, we're just going to leave it there. But yeah, yeah. Um, essentially, uh, you know, our senior year, we, we kind of put together what everybody else around us had already put together and started dating. And a year later, we were married and three months later pregnant and rest is history i guess man wow. It's, oh wow it was pretty quick it was like because we knew each other so well um by the time we started dating we were kind of like i mean kind of know everything we need to know and then yeah we got engaged and 89 days later we were married that's wow. Oklahoma away man <laughs> yeah <laughs> write a song about short engagements that could be hit <laughs> that could be fire right there <laughs> Heck yeah, yeah. The whole state would the whole state would identify for sure. Yeah. Um, but how'd you guys end up in uh, in Kansas City? If she's from Atlanta, obviously you're from Oklahoma. Man, I I just moved up here, uh, figuring out life after college. I had good buddies up here. I was like, I'll move there and make videos in my apartment. And I'm glad it worked out. And I just and dude. just love it. Have good friends. It's I kind of a great. City. It's fun. Great city to tour out of. Nice new airport. Great yeah. airport. Right in the middle of the country. Yeah. yeah. Katie loves it. it I love Kansas City because I feel like I feel like a lot of the, the people and the, the um just like the surroundings are similar. They kind of feel like home, but you have way more to do than like any city in Oklahoma, right? Sure. Like you got major sports in a like sick downtown area and a great airport. That's the main thing about Oklahoma. It's like horrible to fly in and out of yeah kansas, kansas city is a great, great i feel like that people buy tickets in kansas city it's a great great market mm -hmm. great market for i mean we crush it here like compared to it's compared it's not even that big of a city and you know i feel like they show so much love to all the musical shows like it seems every big act i see release shows it feels like they're always stopping in kansas city yeah, yeah. it's a good spot um, I mean, you got you got to hit Missouri, St. Louis. Ooh, might not get out of there alive. So. Yeah, go there on Easy like a choice. Monday afternoon. Great, we're, I think we're going there like next month. So that's okay. Cool. <laughs> Actually, we just had a show there. There was great. It was fun. But uh, keep your head down, uh, <laughs> Corey. I have one last question, uh, yeah, yeah, mainly yeah. because I caught myself doing it to you. So, Trina, all the time, people are like going, "You know what would be funny? You know, you know what you need to write a joke about." You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the equivalent of what you get all the time? What's the most common, like, oh, you need to write a song about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just your family it. members go, when something, I guess, cute or charming happens, they're like, oh, easy, Corey's going to put it in a song. Do they do stuff like that? <laughs> Dude, it's, it's so bad. Like, it's, as soon as you said that, man, I just turned my, my mind off. I just like, stop. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's the worst. But it is the most, it's the most, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's the most overused thing that I get thrown is like, but it's funny what people, We'll say it about. Yeah, sometimes it's yeah, like well, a really bad it suggestion. Because jokes are like, so much different. Wait, are like, you just kind like, of like short engagement. They'll be like, man. <laughs> <I don't> think... <laughs> <laughs> like something like that. It's, it's wild. Like people's you perception of what would make a good song, it just blows my mind. It'll be yeah, like, what's, your, what's, what's a couple good ones? Yeah, does anything stand you're out? It's like watching a sunset and they're like, get I mean, at your have... get fiddle. You're like, come on. <laughs> I don't have like any actual examples that come to mind, but it's, it's stuff like, man, that... McFish sandwich is amazing. Maybe you should write a song about it. So, oh. What are you even, like? Just really specific. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. That's, yeah, you love oh, even, writing songs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, it's that easy. That's why we all do it, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just yeah. can't believe what some people, yeah, the, and it's legitimate suggestions. They're not, they're like, they're joking because they don't really know what else to say, mm -hmm. but they're not joking. They're like, this might make a million dollars yeah, yeah. <laughs> credit if it does if i hear the mcfish song it's i'll I'd laugh, i'll ask you this you ever because yeah that is the worst i can't believe anyone would ever do that <laughs> have you <laughs> and when people do have you ever gotten this so because i've gotten this like once or twice in the hundreds of times people do this to us has everyone ever done that to you and you kind of roll their eyes and then you go that's actually a pretty good idea okay that one i didn't hate does that um, ever happen yeah only with my wife though 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. So I don't, I don't feel as bad like stealing, you know, subject matter from my wife because <laughs> for sure, yeah, you, you, are one. you are one. Really. You are one. You are one. I just had a random dude after a show once, like, be like, dude, on that one bit, you should have like add this in there. I'm, yes. like, ah, I'm like, that's actually going to be pretty funny, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do, I do. it because uh, I'm not going to steal some random guy's joke. I'm too prideful for that, but I hated that it was a decent suggestion. <laughs> So I feel like I get what, those on on um, moments in the show. Of, yeah, you know, like people who I I would immediately write off as like you don't know what you're talking about. But at the end of the day, like fans are experts in a weird way because they are they are the people that we're targeting. Right, They're the like people you want to make happy. Yeah. So in a weird way, like sometimes the least qualified people have some of the best ideas and I I'm with you. I, I hate when it happens because I'm like, I'm the professional. I yeah. Should. Yeah. That's a good word. Um, okay, cool. Corey, we don't want to take too much, too much of your time. It's good to catch up, man. It's been cool to see your uh, success. Keep rolling. What are you, where are you at? Where can people find you? Where, yeah. where are you going on the road? What, tell us where to find you. Shoot. This, this tour is coast to coast. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're on the road with Jason Aldean, which is, been a widely controversial thing lately, which is great for ticket sales. Yeah, uh, they're going you can to, find us on the small tour. towns. <laughs> yeah, small towns everywhere. Watch out, so. <laughs> bro. Um, awesome. You can find us on you know social media. Everything is at Corey Kent. Uh, Corey with an E Y. I don't know every nice. mm-hmm. every barista in America forgets that. Yes, um, but CoreyKentOfficial dot com for tour dates and merchandise and all that stuff and. You know, we're we're here. Actually, I'm right. Uh, I'm in Nashville right now, even though obviously I live in Texas. But we're recording new music, so the record just came out. But we're already on to on to what's next and and looking to the future. And uh, we've got some. We're gonna go over to the UK uh, in Let's January go. and play London and you know Ireland and uh, Scotland, all over the place. So uh, I know you probably got people watching all over. So if you're in one of those great cities, great countries, we'll be over there too. Love it. All right, man. Thanks. Yeah. Y'all hit him up. Go listen to his music if you haven't somehow. And uh, thanks for your time, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. This was Peace. great. Yeah, I appreciate you, Nice dude. to meet you. Yeah, you too. That was Corey. And now it's back. Me, Trey, Katie, in Australia. Uh, story, though, when we were still in Hawaii, I don't think I've told you guys this. Um, we have some friends there, TJ and Brooke. I got there a little before you guys. I go over to their house one night. We got the, uh, the rental car, the Jeep, and I pull up to their house and I'm a little wary of like, maybe I was in the way of the driveway behind me. So I get out of the car and I'm like looking, it's nighttime. I'm like trying to make sure, am I, oh, you know what? I'm not over the driveway, I'm fine. I look up, get kind of startled because there was a woman standing in the driveway, arms crossed, she was not there when I parked the car. And 20 seconds later, she's already in the driveway, just like a scarecrow, just not moving, arms crossed, looking at me. She's a lot like the, almost like the scary neighbor from Home Alone or Pigeon Lady, just with no redeeming qualities, just spooky, just scary. And I was like, oh my gosh, hey, sorry. I was just, Is it okay if I park right here? She goes, I don't care where you park. It's like, okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, like, uh, was that a yes? Uh, all right, we'll just go in, No, no big deal. As we're walking in, she also decides to hawk up one of the nastier loogies I've ever what? heard, especially from a woman. Just Power like, move. So what? just like, all right, sorry. Just want to make sure. Have a good night. Really looky hawk <laughs> Spits it out. We're like, get in the house. Get in the house. I mean, it was like, it was scary. So we go in and we, of course we can't wait. We're talking to TJ and Brooke like, what's up? Do you have any like fun stories about your neighbor? Anything we should know? And you know, he's like, yeah, there's one lady. She's kind of, kind of mean, kind of rude. I was like, I think we just talked to her or whatever. Someone else, another friend comes over to the house about 30 minutes later. He gets in the door and the first thing he says is, hey, there's a neighbor really upset about a Jeep right now. And I was like, I tried to get ahead of this. Like I, I asked if it was okay. She said, I don't care where you park. And I was like, I can't believe yeah, she's So I parked upset. in her yard. She so. doesn't care. And I couldn't believe, I was like, I knew this was a problem. She said she didn't mind. And then the friend Ian was like, yeah, she keeps going off. She says she wanted, she had me come and tell you that she wants you to move it, but she feels bad asking someone who's disabled. <laughs> That's the great burn. Great burn. <laughs> they just thought I was, I don't know, mentally disabled, physically. I don't know. I've never been insulted that way in my I life. They've told you, they've never seen a person that pale on the island. <laughs> like, know. this guy, he's from, this guy's an alien. I don't know. <laughs> I was I was flabbergasted. I mean, yeah. We would have you move your car, but you're clearly disabled. Yeah. So don't worry about it. I just feel I really don't want you to park there, but 
You did what? a great part. He parallel parts. I don't know how he did it. It doesn't look like he can read. It's so funny just being accused of a disability and not knowing where they think it is. I would love right. to fix yeah. it. Is so it physical? did you go? Back- <laughs> is it mental? The way I walked. Did way- you go back out there and encounter like? I, I scurried out there as quick as possible and moved that Jeep so far away from their house. And I didn't see anyone. I would have loved to follow up. Like, is it up here? Yeah. You just run out there, just confuse her more. You'd be like, screw you. <laughs> and then just walk out there with a limp. <laughs> yeah. Like, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. Just mess with her. Like, what is it? Just go out there and do sign language. <laughs> like, what? But yeah. I was like, that was the first time. Wow. Just like, oh, we don't want to ask. We feel bad. I mean, he's got a disability. I was like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. But. And of course, Rachel was like, I did get out of the car weird. I got out of the car weird. Could have been that. <laughs> yeah. I like, I don't she out, yeah. That's a supportive, yeah. For early on marriage. It was probably me. I got out. I, my leg was asleep. I bet she's talking about me. So <laughs> I don't know what happened, but that was a great, great start to that. It was like the first night of this vacation. Yeah. Getting the, just like, oh, wow. Hawaii. Glad to be here. Island helping the people. Time, right? Been through a lot. Hopefully we can bring some laughs. And they're like, someone get the mentally challenged guy off my lawn. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Spitting at him didn't spook him. I got to do something else. Yes, spitting at him. <laughs> yeah. So it's also Man. strange to to think someone's disabled and then to like hawk a loogie at them. Yeah, if that's what she thought. Yeah, that startled the poor person. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Strange neighbor. Man. Good times though. Well, you're not the only one who's getting mistaken. Poor Thomas has been mistaken as a girl a lot to this. Trip. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, he's poor guy, and he. Everyone calls him a girl. He yeah, looks like a poor guy looks like a little like pretty bow girl. Bow in the hair, you go girl. No bow, and no like, girl. I don't feel like I dress him girly. My mom, you put him in a shirt. My mom, I guess, gave him that was like a kind of a mauve. It was, and it was. I okay. mean, wow, that looks like a little girl. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. But other than that, I feel like I have him in boy clothes. Maybe it's the vi- yeah. I don't know. We, I mean, Jake can't help. He he's going around looks like he's disabled. You don't but, want me near him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Poor, this, that but disabled guy has. We a did do daughter. like a really <laughs> awkward like, you know, we were at an elevator and this girl was like, "Oh, she's so pretty," and you know, we're kind of like, "Ah, oh, we're at an elevator. Let's just not correct her." We were both kind of on the same page, just like, "Let's move on." Mm-hmm, yeah. But then she just kept talking to us and kept being like, "She, her," uh, and we both. What's her name? What's her name? She's beautiful, yeah. Thomas. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. She like, is a doll. It is a girl, right? We're like. It's actually a boy, and she was like, Got "Oh!" Her. And then you're just awkward because it's been like She's a like, conversation sorry, sorry, now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like it's fine. I mean, it's fine. Whatever. It's just like maybe you, we just thought you were gonna stop talking to us, so we didn't <laughs> know that. We didn't think it was gonna last this long. Yeah. yeah. The people in Australia are so friendly. Everyone is so down to talk. One kind of funny observation I had, which I think you'll love this. So Rachel and I, we're, we meander to a bookstore in Brisbane, and it was awesome. It's like their Barnes and Noble. It's huge, and I'm in the uh, I'm in the business section. You know, there's like some business, you know, some Ooh, self-help, some, some marketing books, whatever. I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking for, but uh, find something fun in here. And I think it's one thing to spark up a conversation at a bookstore. Maybe that happens a lot. Uh, but this guy, for, he starts off with like, you, uh, you read often? And I was just like, no, actually, you know, my wife's a big reader. We're sitting here. I'm just trying to find something. That's tough when a bookstore like, I've read one book in the last decade. <laughs> Yeah, my you, honeymoon you t- read a couple Colleen Hoover's, but yeah. that's it. You basically won the lottery seeing me here today. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, so this guy just proceeds to just like share. With, there's something about being in the business section that elicits a certain type of person. Mm-hmm. And what I found out elicits a very specific type of conversation because then it was like, so what kind of, uh, kind of business are you in? And then he just talked oh. my ear off about his businesses, his ideas, his like thoughts. Now, he does work a minimum wage job right now. Right now, but he give him time. Yeah, and just talking my After leg he off. He reads those books. Maybe not. Maybe mm-hmm. that's why he needs the books. I don't know. And he gets my number afterwards. He wants oh, to wow. stay in touch. It was like it was like that's exactly how a guy should meet uh, the woman. I think I don't know. You know, a cute <laughs> bookstore. You read often, and, and then I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. And then I'm telling Rachel like, oh, I can't. He didn't even get to pick out a book. I've been here 20 minutes. I've been talking to this guy. And then I go back in the aisle. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go back in. I think he's gone. Another guy. So what brings you to the business section? Like, here we a go. Different guy. Oh my different gosh. guy. And I was like, oh, I'm just, and then he's like, oh, American accent. And we're talking America versus Australia. And then, dude, I'm not kidding. He also, minimum wage, uh, works security, um, which is whole conversation. He made me feel less and less secure as it went on. But he just tells me, you know, I got a couple <laughs> ideas of stuff I've been trying to work on. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you do? And he's like, you know, he just told me about the Uber for this. And it yeah. was just. <laughs> Uber, but. That's when you know you're in a bad combo. Yeah. Thank Uber, but for uh, skydiving. Because you 
because it's tough to find. And Uber dentistry. Yeah. Thoughts? Thoughts? Yeah. So I just I got a, I just picked a book. I mean, he like suggested one. I was like, Thanks. Got to go. So it was, it elicits a certain type of person. It was really funny. Like I'm sure every 98% of that bookstore, there's amazing conversations going on. But if you go in the business section, it's like, I bet he wants to hear my ideas on business. (laughs) She, yeah. Because he's in the business section. Did Rachel come out of the romance section just like crying or something? (laughs) She's like, oh, I had the best. I went to the, I I lingered too long in the 50 Shades of Grey section and I I got chained up. (laughs) Oh my god! I know you got the people don't realize that about bookstores. This you got to keep a moving. You become podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, chained up like uh, they don't even know what that they is. They go to the Christian <laughs> section. You start to hear Shrek. <laughs> so like, it's wild. I did see a meme. I think it was like just today, and it was just like a text from a dad to a son. It was like, "Why did you tell mom BDSM stands for like?" buds drinks salsa and something oh. music or something because then there was a screenshot that was like just invited B- bob and agnes over for bdsm bdsm <laughs> night oh they're gosh. excited <laughs> and they're yeah. bringing their pinata they i forgot what it stood for exactly but something drinks and salsa music and so that's all what trey meant you're right chaining himself to that the happened music. to my manager when i was working my corporate job he sent this like like meme to the whole team and it said bde at the bottom no <laughs> google it shelter kids yeah it was just like a meme it was like bde yeah. and everyone was like what? what do you think it meant i don't think he knew he just liked what big was happening. dance yeah entertainment big dance yeah. energy or something he just liked what was happening in the meme and someone had to be like you might want to google that one like, oh, didn't he? Oh, you show me. Wasn't he like, uh, I am so, so He sorry. was so <laughs> embarrassed, of course. It was just... Yeah. I would love... If I was in that corporate world, I'd love to report that HR just to mess with him. Because he, he was a sweet, innocent guy. He was guy. so nice. You imagine yeah. him doing a meeting. They're like, you're sending what? In the group? He's like, I, I didn't know. It was know. Leonardo DiCaprio. Your team uh, is like all female. Gatsby. Why did you send this to yeah, them? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to... Um, he starts sending L- LDE memes to try to make up for it. I don't know that one. Just the opposite. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, that reminds me. Have you seen Young Thug? He's in the news right now because apparently... You kept up with him. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not like real in touch. I think he's having rap lyrics being used against him in court right now. So he and his lawyer are both going on this whole PR move. They're they're rapping positive things in the courtroom. He... (laughs) It's genius. It's just this classic spin zone. He deleted the tweet, but I think people still have screenshots. I got to pull this up. This is pretty funny. Um, I'm just like, no, that's not what that means. Oh, here it is. Oh, he's like spinning his own Spinning it, yeah. So swag means someone who admires God. (laughs) YSL means young soldiers of the Lord. Oh. (laughs) Glock, this is the best one. Glock stand. It's an acronym, actually. It's not a guy. Glock's an acronym. It's an acronym. You, all caps. Glock. Give me the first l- word. Okay. Guarding. 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 Love. Blank. Comma. It's Guard- kind of two sentences. Guarding love. Others. Character. Knowingly. Wow. You got knowingly. Uh, <laughs> K's are tough in acronyms. I know Young Thug and his lawyer down there are like, there's no words that start with K. Oh, uh, that's tough. Guarding lives. Overcoming challenges knowingly. Mm. That's so dumb. Um, op, which is a very commonly used term. He says that's an acronym as well. It stands for overly positive pal. <laughs> so there's a bunch of them on here. Uh, gang means going above normal, guys. <laughs> going above normal, Go, guys. Going above normal, guys. Guys, come on. Hey, I want to give you guys a little something, a little token of my gratitude for going above normal, That is guys. some $5 lawyer right there. He's like, yo, no, man, if you just... If you change what it means. They don't know what you really meant, so you can say this. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, apparently he posted it, and then Bruce probably just getting made fun of, so he deleted it. But he really did post that for a little bit. Wow. So, Gotta love it. Nothing love you can't it. get out of. Respect. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope you guys, I hope your all's Christmas is filled with Glock this year. <laughs> get your Glocks mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. The BDE Glock style. YSL. Young BDSM. soldiers. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? Australia treated us very well. Hawaii, thank you all. Uh, we're going to take this last episode of the year. We'll be right back in the new year. Tour dates, coming to a bunch of new cities. Can't wait. We got hometown shows right off the bat. Yeah. Springfield January. and Oklahoma. Yeah. Jake's and my hometown shows in the same weekend. Very fun. So get tickets, come hang, 
and give us five star reviews for Christmas. Love you guys. See you in the new year. Swag. Merry Christmas. Swag. Correct opinion.